Hey guys, Forex here. Hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is an Amstrad CPC 464. Yep, it's another one. <laughs> uh, this one's faulty as well. Um, this is a, this has a, a number of faults. Um, if I power on, uh, you'll see what we get. We get a black and white screen. Um, that's never a good sign. Um, also, what I've noticed if I eject the tape mechanism now I can't invoke uh, the the load routine because obviously I've got to see if I can fix that first um, but the tape deck um, does actually do something and I'll show you if I rewind hopefully you can see the uh, rewind actually rewinding and if I stop that and press fast forward um, you can see we've got absolutely nothing now what that tells me is the belt inside is fine but the idler tire uh, there's something wrong with it because it's the idler tire that helps with a fast forward and, and reels the tape um, so yeah I think the idler tire may have perished um, in this tape mechanism <laughs> the only thing that does work and this is ironic is the actual <laughs> reset counter normally this thing breaks <laughs> so the one thing that normally breaks actually works and the rest of it is knackered <laughs> now this system it's not in bad condition it needs a good clean obviously you can see the the two enter buttons have, have faded a little uh, but you get that on uh, Amstrad CPCs. The one I had before was re I was really lucky. They were actually quite nice, uh, but this one they faded. So this thing's going to need a good strip down and clean as well. But yeah, if you stick around, guys, I'll see if I can get this working again. Let's get in the Amstrad CPC. Now to do that, there's six screws I need to remove. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and the final one is here. Remove those six screws, uh, and then I'll show you how you get the top lid off. Now, before I remove the lid, guys, I just got an apology to make. If you hear dog barking in the background, um, I can't help it. It's my neighbours. It's one of those dogs. If a squirrel farts in a tree, it just goes mental. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, let's get this top lid off. Now, the first thing I want to do is grab it here. So we grab it here and you open it like a clam. And the first thing you'll see if I hold that there is you'll see this that plugs into the motherboard. Uh, this is the tape deck power and uh, uh, you just need to grab it like this and, and pull it out. And then what you do is you open it like a clam. Now you can see this one um, is different uh, to the other Amstrad CPC. This actually has membrane tails. Um, now it's very easy. Just grab them, pull them out. Um, but be very careful because you know these things are, are very brittle compared to the the ribbons so yeah i'm just gonna grab those i'm gonna pull them out really carefully and, and then that's the top removed it's time to get the motherboard out but first i'd show you that this all genuine 80s pubes on this motherboard <laughs> okay let's get the motherboard out it's very easy guys thankfully Amstrad has put circles around the screws we need to remove so there's one here 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 and the final one is here remove those screws and we'll be able to take the motherboard out the case now the first thing I want to check is voltage um, and I've got the power coming in I've got my on and off switch uh, so let's power on and we'll take a look see if we get 5 volts and we do so uh, we're getting power down here now you may be asking why am I measuring power down here well it's very simple if you measure power down here the likelihood the whole board's got power is very high um, if I measure there I'm not going to learn anything I'm just checking the connector right that's all I'm checking but if you're checking down here like the furthest away I can get um, then the likelihood the whole of the board is getting power is pretty high so that's why I always check 
uh, this capacitor down here for 5 volts and as you can see it's dead nuts on what I've done is I've fired up my scope uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around the board I'm going to check things like clock, reset, interrupts, chip enable, output enable those type of controlling signals uh, that go to uh, a lot of these ICs uh, just to make sure they're all okay um, because if one of those is missing then obviously that's the problem so yeah I'm just going to spend five minutes doing that I'll come back uh, if I find anything so I went round looking at all those signals and they all look okay there was some of them that looked a little bit sketchy but I, I can put that down to the system not running properly um, but there's nothing that's like punching me in the face and screaming at me saying it's me it's me <laughs> so yeah what I'm going to do now guys is I'm just going to spend five minutes um, looking at the RAM um, so yeah well, I'll check the RAM out uh, and then I'll come back Houston <laughs> we have a problem um, I'll show you what I found um, I went like this I started checking the RAM in this order instead of going up and down or down and up I went like this uh, and I'll show you what happened if we check this output of this RAM which is pin 14 which is just there we can see that thing is happily doing its thing right and I'll move on to the next one uh, which is here again that's happily doing its thing I'll move on to the next one which is here again it's happily doing its thing and I'll move on to the next one it's there wah, wah. that's not right it's doing something guys you can see it could hopefully you can see that it's doing something but that is not right at all you know that should look something like that so yeah there's something wrong uh, going on here guys um you feel the, the chips oh yeah that's getting warm <laughs> see now the ones around it are not warm they well they are warm but they're not warm warm that one yeah i can't keep my finger on that for, for very long something shorted guys uh, in this ram chip um, i can feel it it's, it's getting really warm now in fact to the point where i'm going to turn it off because um, i don't want it to kill anything else what i want to show you uh, is what's happening with this ram guys and why it's getting crazy warm um, i've got my negative probe hooked up to my multimeter and if i touch the positive probe I'm on continuity and hopefully you can hear that uh, now if we look at one of the, the good runs down here we'll go on the output uh, you can see infinite ohms and it's perfectly fine now if we check the dodgy run it's getting crazy warm can you hear that we got a dead short yeah so that's probably why that rum is getting nice and toasty it's shorted and it's just killing the date a bit so yeah i'm gonna whip this rum out and replace it now you can probably hear in the background i fired up my desoldering station um, a top tip for you guys before you desolder a chip just go along and put some fresh solder on there and um, it just helps you remove it so yeah, I'm going to take my soldering gun and I'm going to suck out this ram. That's the ram removed. Came out pretty nice. Uh, what I'm going to do now uh, is fit a socket and we'll put a new ram in there and fingers crossed, hopefully, it brings the system back. sockets in place let's get the new 4164 RAM in there 
new RAMs installed. Let's power on. See what we get. <laughs> Suck it, Alan Sugar. <laughs> Yay! So thank for that. <laughs> oh, dude, you don't know how happy I am. Um, cause yeah, I was, you know, cause if it wasn't this RAM guys, I was like, oh no, cause there's all the things on this data bus, you know, you've got things like there's a latch somewhere, you've got the gate array. Um, but yeah, I was 90% sure it was the RAM, um, because it was getting hot and you saw it was shorting that data bit. Whoo. <laughs> winner, winner chicken dinner um, what I can do now is move on to the tape deck now I can I can find out why that's not uh, fast forwarding or probably even playing as well so move on to the tape deck now now to remove the tape mechanism uh, first I mean it sounds crazy right I've got to remove the keyboard now we have to do that because you can see here's the power LED it's buried under the keyboard and it's actually soldered to the actual tape mechanisms PCB great design so yeah I've got to remove the keyboard to get the actual tape the cart <laughs> don't ask uh, <laughs> yeah so I've got to remove this screw uh, this screw this screw uh, this screw just here this screw uh, and then this screw and then I'll be able to take out the keyboard Now to remove the tape mechanism, I've got some more things I have to remove before I can get it out. Well done Alan Sugar, absolutely brilliant. Perfect design there, unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry, I've gone off on a run. Um, but yeah, to get it out, I've got to get the actual power on off switch uh, and the volume knob out. Uh, to do that, there's four screws I need to remove. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. Remove those and I can take out the power and the actual volume knob. And then I can finally start removing the tape deck. <laughs> Unbelievable. Finally, I can start taking out the tape deck, <laughs> remove the volume switch and the power switch. Uh, this is just the number of screws I need to remove now. Sorry, I'm up. <laughs> there's one here. There's one here. There's one here. Uh, there's one here. And the final one is buried right down there. I don't know if you can see it. Remove those five screws. And then I'll be able to take out the actual tape mechanism. Finally. I'm pretty confident I know what the problem is with the tape mechanism um, the first uh, if we take a look at the idler tire don't know if you can see it can you see there's actual cracks in it there's one of them there hopefully you can see that and there's a crack there if we move it along a bit more there's another one there's a crack there uh, there's a crack there so yeah that idler tire uh, will need replacing and I think the belts uh, need replacing as well. And that's why it's not fast forwarding and rewinding. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give this a bloody good service. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. First thing I want to do is get the function keys off. Now to do that, it's very easy. There's an e-clip just here. If I remove that, I'll be able to pull the ball through. Uh, and then I can take these off. Uh, and get them soaking and cleaned. That's the function keys sitting in my wash basin. I'll leave them in there for half an hour, then come back, give them a scrub, and they should be good as new. Now, the first thing I want to do before I start replacing parts is give the tape mechanism a good clean. No point putting new parts on a dirty mechanism. So, yeah, I'm just going to spend 10 minutes with cotton board and some alcohol going around giving this a good clean and i've already showed you how you service one of these so uh, i'm not going to go into detail with that but yeah i'm going to give it a good clean first 
that's the mechanism all cleaned and you can probably see where I scraped away some of the rust that was on the mechanism as well what I'm going to do now is flip this over and I'm going to strip it down so I can replace the idler tire first thing I want to do is remove the idler tire tension spring how to do that it's very easy you just get a pick grab it like that and you can pull it off if I can get it over there you go that's it it's off uh, what I need to do now uh, is remove the actual capstan capstan flywheel off so to do that I'm going to remove this screw here I'll remove this screw here and then I can move this bracket out of the way uh, and then I can get to the idler tire bracket that's the bracket removed uh, this has the eject um, clip that holds the tape uh, mechanism down um, so I can move that to the side uh, what I need to do now is I'm just going to take this screw out here that give me a bit more room in there and then I'm going to take the capstan flywheel off uh, and then I can get the idler tire wheel and it's bracket out that's the two screws that holds the PCB down what I can do now is remove the old belt because I'll be replacing this belt anyway so yeah that's, uh, you can see it's misshapen can you see it it looks a bit dodgy <laughs> so we're replacing that what I want to do now is flip this over and I'll show you what I need to remove if you look at this plastic clip here uh, there's a, a, a C clip and it basically holds the capstan to the flywheel um, if you remove this you'll be able to pull that flywheel through and then I can get to the actual um, idler tire bracket so I'll go ahead and remove this little clip here uh, and then come back that's the capstan and capstan flywheel removed what I need to do now is remove this screw and then I should be able to wiggle out the actual idler tire and its bracket and there's the old idler tire and its bracket removed now I've got a sneaky feeling the moment I'm going to try and pull this out um, it's just going to disintegrate um, because it's it's basically cracked you can hopefully see the cracks um, so yeah I'll get this old tire off I'll put the new tire on and pop it back in there yeah I was right guys as soon as I grabbed it it just just snapped in off you can see if I if I bend it you can see the the cracks in there it's just totally gone so what I'll do is I'll get the new one on there and we'll put this back in no idler tires on let's get back in the tape mechanism um, I actually made a mistake guys I over tensioned this spring uh, so what I had to do was uh, just put it over a couple of notches and that was me I pulled it toward and I could feel it I over tensioned it so I just had to put it over a couple of notches uh, just to make it uh, back to what it originally was that's all me made a mistake uh, don't do that <laughs> but anyway I've got the capstan wheel uh, and the capstan stand back in there well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace the old belt. Obviously, the old belt's been taken off. Uh, I can put the new one on. So I'll go ahead and do that uh, and then come back. And we're all back together. Um, what I'm going to do now is just spend five minutes uh, giving it a grease. Um, it's very easy to find out what you need to do. Grease. Uh, if you press the play button, you can see the moving parts. Uh, and they're the ones that you need to grease up so I'll go ahead and grease this mechanism uh, and then I'll come back everything's been lubricated that needed lubricated you don't need to go overboard with the grease and um, what I'm going to do now is take some alcohol and a q-tip and I'm going to clean the erase head the play and record head the capstan and the capstan pinch wheel so I'll go ahead and do that and then come back 
and we're all serviced, all repaired. Time to get this back into the CPC 464. So what I've done guys is I've partially put this back together. It's not actually screwed in. Um, the reason for that is because I still want to calibrate the azimuth uh, in this thing. Um, but first I want to test it just to make sure the actual tape mechanism is working properly. So I'm going to power it on and it's on. Now I'm going to invoke the actual play routine. Um, so first thing I want to test is fast forward because we were missing that before. So let's press fast forward on the tape and hopefully you can see the tape is whizzing round. I'm going to stop that. Now I'm going to test the rewind. And it is, it's rewinding. So that's working great. Now let's press play and hopefully we should get time. Yeah, and hopefully you can hear that guys. So, and it's actually trying to load. <laughs> so that's a good sign. Um, so yeah, I'm happy that that's functioning stop that now I'm happy this is functioning what I'm gonna do now is hook up my scope um, I'm gonna tap into the analog side of this tape deck uh, and then I'm gonna calibrate the azimuth I'm all up top to the analog side of this tape deck uh, pin 7 of the op amp and obviously ground um, so yeah I'm gonna fire up my scope now uh, and calibrate the azimuth on this tape deck I'm ready to calibrate the azimuth uh, in this tape mechanism. I've got my azimuth calibration tape there. I'm hooked up with my scope. Uh, yes, I'm wearing shorts because it's really hot today. I've <laughs> got my scope ready to go. Uh, so I've already invoked the play routine. So let's play now what you'll see. Let's put that in there. Ready. Uh, you should see a 6.3 kilohertz, there you go, a sine wave on my scope. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start turning the screwdriver like this uh, and hopefully I can get maximum peak. So you can see I'm going down there, I'm going, going up, going up, going up and we're going back down again. This one's really sen sensitive I can tell. So I'd say maximum peak is about there uh, and that's it guys that's the azimuth calibrated not difficult to do uh, when you've got the, the right equipment um, so yeah that's the azimuth calibrated let me take the screwdriver out there now and um, that's the azimuth calibrated I can finally get this back together and see if we can load a game from tape and we're all back together all calibrated all working let's power on the system get power on let's load a game invoke the load I've got my favorite and everybody else's favorite Operation Wolf um, like I said in my previous video guys, this is a really good port. It's one of the best I've seen on a computer like this. So let's press play. Make sure the volume's up so I can hear the tone. And hopefully we get a load. Uh, this has got a rather long lead in, so I think it'll be a bit before we get a tone. Okay, we got the tone. And there we go. We're loading, guys. Uh, so what I'll do now um, is I'll let this go. I'm not going to film the whole load. Uh, and then when it's starting to do the screen draw, I'll come back. Okay, guys, hopefully you can hear that. That's the actual screen draw of the game being loaded um, 
and the tape sounds fantastic it really does it sounds better than the the other one I have so yeah what I'll do guys uh, is I'll let this finish loading and then when it's finished loading I'll come back so okay did it load <laughs> I think you can already hear the answer to that first time absolutely first time brilliant start the game uh, other good news as well guys why I'm here uh, the keyboard works I was uh, dreading that the keyboard might not work but it actually works perfectly fine so uh, I'm happy about that because I was like okay if the tape decks not working and the system's not working you can pretty much guarantee that the keyboard's not working but it's working fine but yeah there you go guys fully back to working condition I hope you liked the video guys if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one and I'm almost dead just wait till I die oh no I sustained a lethal injury <laughs> better get to the hospital <laughs> catch you next time guys <laughs>